Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to DOS TV, Science for the People. Patuloy ang ating special coverage sa AASA NAST Philippines International Symposium sa Taal Vista Hotel, Tagaytay. Abangan ang aming mga panayam sa speakers dito sa symposium kaya naman tutok lang dito sa DOS TV, Science for the People. Makakasama natin ngayon ang Associate Professor from the College of Mass Communication of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Dr. Clarissa C. David. Magandang araw, ma'am. Magandang araw. Hi. Alright, ma'am. Kwento niyo sa amin. Share us yung uh, topic niyo dito sa ginanap na symposium sa ASA NAST the Philippines. Okay. So, my, ang intindi ko dun sa ASA NAST uh, is that it's really talking to different national academies of science mm -hmm. in Asia. So since ang audience natin ay mga academies and ang mga academies ay highly senior, very eminent scholars, uh, the, the point of the talk was to really talk about in communicating the work of scientists in, in, in any country, mm -hmm. uh, we have to really consider what our metrics of success are, mm -hmm. what do we need to do in order to engage the public more closely in the area of science because malaki ang um, consequence nito mm -hmm. in terms of uh, general education of the public but also in terms of support for the work of scientists. Mm -hmm. Basically, what is a science community? A science community is all the scientists, uh, all the higher education institutions, all the think tanks, all the institutions that do basic science research or applied science research because that madami yon, iba-iba uh, yon. So you have physicists, biologists, biotechnologists, you have people who are studying agriculture, health, doctors, medicine, etc. Uh, they're a scientific community because they talk to each other, they communicate with each other. So the, the and all of their work is really pointed toward improving public welfare. People who do research in medicine, for example, the, the basic research science, uh, they are after, for instance, developing drugs to uh, improve the health of, of individuals or address diseases. Pero madalas very basic research yon. Yes. Hindi nakakarating yon. It takes a very long time before that kind of research actually makes it to uh, medicine that is in the market for application, mm -hmm. for use. And all the work that goes into it, there's also a lot of work that never makes it to actual pharmaceutical use, for example. But they're all very interesting. They're all very useful. How do we get these kinds of uh, uh, efforts of scientists to the minds of the general public? Na ito ang mga ginagawa ng mga scientists natin. Kasi kung naiintindihan nila yung ginagawa ng scientists, then they're more likely to support science as an area of study, as an area of financial support for government funds, as an area in general to push in terms of policy. Meron ba dapat maging uh, policy in a way na para mas maging madali sa publiko na maintindihan talaga yung mga ginagawa ng mga scientists, not particularly na mas makilala ko kung sino yung mga scientists behind this uh, project? Yes. In fact, in, I, I took it out of my slide earlier, but one of the things that napansin ko dito sa science communication in the Philippines is a lot of the writing is about the person doing yeah. the project and less about the actual science of it. Uh, mas importante sa publiko na ma ma maintindihan nila yung trabaho ng science. Na not the, sci that the personality of the scientist, but the actual science that they do and mm -hmm. what it means for their lives and how it's supposed to improve their life either in the short or the long run. Because when you do that, when you focus on the science, other people can really understand better how science works, 
uh, and when we say science, that's big. That's all different yeah. kinds of science. So there's a lot of content to draw from. Uh, why would a general per wh why would Juan de la Cruz be interested in learning about the n and the names and the education history and the family life <laughs> of various scientists? There's really no compelling reason for that. But there is a reason for them to understand what's new in terms of research in herbal medicines yeah. in the Philippines. You know, this kind of herb, does it really work? Does it not? Or they ha can have a specific interest in uh, uh, the research on conservation in the Philippines. Ito ba, alin ba yung mga species na endemic sa Pilipinas, na endangered na? Maraming trabahong ginagawa ang scientists that the work itself is interesting. And that I think is much more valuable to communicate to the public than the personality of the scientists. Ano yung mga possible way para mas ito nga, mas matutukan natin o parang mas maibigay talaga natin yung importance na mas malaman natin yung science instead of those scientists? I think one of the things that we need to do is to try to lobby for more interest in the media to cover science as an area. But that has to work in tandem with encouraging scientists to have a willingness to engage with media. Kasi madalas ang mga scientists, technical people, ayaw nila masyado nakikipag-usap sa mga sa mga press kasi natatakot sila they may be misquoted and that's okay. fair but there are entire training programs that will teach scientists to deal with the press sometimes you don't need to actually face the press like i'm doing yes. now <laughs> sometimes it's a matter of writing out mm -hmm. a short piece mm -hmm. that will explain your work uh, so there needs to be institutional support for the whole endeavor of science communication and that was my my pitch in the this conference is for something like the national academies of science and technology this can be part of their role is how do you link the work of scientists with the work that media uh, workers do so that the media have access to content from scientists and scientists have access to media when they need to announce certain developments in their work at isa pa sa issue talaga, ma'am, ay yung paano ba mas mauunawaan ng publiko? Kasi usually pagka sinabi natin mga science terms, masyadong technical talaga. At gustuhin man lang natin na kung magagamitin in layman's term itong mga uh, issues or items na nakapalog sa science, paano? Kailangan ba talaga itagalog pa natin itong mga ito? Well, minsan, one of the things we have to remember is hindi naman importante matutunan ng publiko yung jargon mm -hmm. ng basic science, di ba? Okay. There's no re particular reason why they need to learn the jargon. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is to get rid of the jargon. And it is always a challenge to scientists to try to write in a clear way. Because you can really, when you're writing for or producing content for a more general non-scientist audience, they're not that interested in how you got to where you are in terms of the, the chemicals that you used or the software that you used to analyze this data. So, maraming, by dint of the fact that you don't have to explain every step, like you do in a journal article, some of the jargon will naturally fall away. Uh, the, what makes it trick, what is tricky for scientists is articulating, itong ginagawa mong trabaho ngayon, this particular piece of research, how does it improve somebody's life? And that has to be clear and it has to be at the forefront of all communication to the public from scientists because if you're banking on a journalist or a member of the general public to figure out why this piece of research is important to them they have no reason to do the extra work to do that it's the scientists job or the institutions of science it's their job to identify why and articulate in very simple terms why it's useful and that's you know that's everywhere nowadays because you can for example, if your research is trying to figure out is drinking coffee because of antioxidants in it <laughs> going to make you a healthier person or not, right? When you, when you read the journal articles around that, they're talking about technical terms of antioxidants, they did this, they described the method of how they extract chemicals, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, what all people really need to know is is it dangerous to drink six or seven cups of coffee a day or could it be good for me? That's it, right? So it's a matter of identifying what is relevant to the public and just focus on that. Kailangan ba maging scientist ka para masabing ikaw ay science communicator? No, not at all. A lot of, sci a lot of really successful science journalists and science communicators are communicators by profession. They are journalists. Uh, they have a specific interest in science. There are many, of course, there are many science journalists that 
started out with an undergraduate degree in science and then learned how to write for a general audience. So it's a mix. But science communication has to include professional communicators because it, it's also an acknowledgement that there is a skill involved that scientists don't have. They don't have to because they're not communicators by profession. Yeah. So it's an acknowledgement that there's an expertise that's required here in communication. You have to learn how the press operate, how the media think, what would be attractive to them, uh, how to write in a way that public will understand. It's unfair for us, for, for us to expect scientists to write press releases. I don't think it's a good use of their time to begin with. So the next best thing is how can you help build bridges uh, by training up journalists to understand how scientists talk, but at the same time making scientists understand that they need to explain things in a particular way to a journalist. So if it's sort of levels of technical jargon, the scientist is over here, understands everything. The general public is over here, understands nothing about the jargon. And your, tech, your science communicators are in the middle and can bridge that gap. Pagdating dito sa Pilipinas, ano yung dapat pang ma-highlight or siguro ma-develop pa when it terms to science communication and science community? I think attention on science from journalists needs to be developed and that needs to be done by scientists. Because the, the relationship between the press and scientists has always been tenuous. There's no particular interest in the media to cover science. There's no particular interest among scientists to be covered by the media. But at the same time, a yeah, Supreme Court decision comes down on BT Talong, for example, and the scientists are upset na hindi na iintindihan ng publiko na ang scientists don't have 100% consensus, yeah. things like this, right? But how do you expect the public to understand that if you don't talk to them? Uh, and the Supreme Court justices are part of that public. Legislators are part of that public. People who are decision makers in the funding of science, in the support of science, are part of the public. So talagang kailangan both ends, but most of the work is going to be from the institutions that deal with the science. And of course, our program, the US TV, is a, uh, is a platform to uh, showcase all the programs of the government, not only the DOST. Baka merong ka ibang recommendation to be more engaging and para mas ma-inform pa ang public when it terms to science. I think uh, specifically trying to build programs that will attract editors and journalists, professional editors and journalists who have a wide audience reach already and trying to figure out how to make our content interesting to them and building a relationship with them. Uh, a mutually beneficial relationship is always a good step. It's a necessary first step because things like this, DOSC TV, you you are trying to build your own audience to a completely new channel and a completely new source. Uh, it's difficult to build an audience, right? In anything, it's difficult to build an audience. So I think it's more efficient to, it's, it's also efficient to approach this as go to the people who have the audiences built in and then sell your, well not sell, but promote your content to them because that requires work. But when it works, you already reach a big audience by default. Do you have any final words, ma'am? <laughs> um, I think final words is that science communication is, uh, is a growing field. It's its own field, which means it's always tricky, right? If It wouldn't be a subject of research if it wasn't complicated to begin with. So the fact that we have journals in science communication means this is becoming an important policy issue and it is certainly an important public issue and we need to follow science communicators uh, and science communication programs in the country. UPLB has a science communication program. I think UP Diliman is trying to be related to it in terms of journalism but not like LB which has its own program. Uh, and we have to make sure that all of the science institutions like DOST, NAST and everybody else DOH has an arm that does this. Uh, everybody talks to each other so that it's all coordinated action. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mga kaibigan, nakasama po natin ngayon si Dr. Clarissa David mula sa UP Diliman. <laughs>
Makakasama naman po natin ngayon ang Associate Professor ng School of Nursing and Graduate School of the Centro Escolar University, Dr. Josephine M. De Leon. Magandang araw, ma'am. Hello, good morning. Ma'am, ano, uh, discuss niyo sa amin ngayon ano yung inyong topic on today's symposium? Uh, I discuss about a bundle of care interventions mm -hmm. in improving patients' outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, Basically, the bundle of care is a group of nursing intervention. So it started in the United States. Uh, they created specific bundle, particularly in um, in intensive for patients in intensive care units. So they created this what you call as the ventilator bundle. So basically, the bundle of care is a set of interventions, in particular nursing interventions, because I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they have evidences of these interventions that mm -hmm. these are effective and they put them all together mm -hmm. to produce uh, more improved outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, ano yun yung mga uh, uh, package or bundle of care yeah, na ito? Parang, parang ano, <laughs> di ba? Parang ano yun, yung pag bumibili ka, di ba? Yung BFF bundle. Mm -hmm. So, it's the same thing with the nursing, uh, nursing field or nursing practice. Uh, they put together just like uh, pagkain or food, they, they have the best of it, they put it together and put it in the bundle. So this one is, their aim is to improve patients' life or patients' uh, outcomes, especially for patients in, uh, in the ICU. Mm -hmm. So dun siya nag start, mm -hmm. actually. So what we do in CEU now is to, to mimic or to, in spite of this bundle, we actually conducted researches about this bundle, and I, my favorite is the pressure ulcer bundle of care. Mm -hmm. So, mostly in ICU also for patients, but this pressure ulcer bundle of care, or what you call this, the PUB bundle, uh, is very particular for patients who are bed bound. Okay. Yung mga, like in the ICU, mm -hmm. di ba? They are bed bound, uh, they are comatose, for example, mm -hmm. or after surgery, for example, because mm -hmm. most common, if these patients ke, are, are bed bound, they may acquire pressure ulcer. Yes. So that's why that's that, that's the first that uh, that we have created in CU. Then uh, lately, uh, together with my graduate students, we developed the CAP bundle. The CAP bundle stands for Community Acquired Pneumonia. Uh -huh. My graduate students is a practitioner, a nurse practitioner at the Lang Center of the Philippines. So we got interested on building up a bundle again uh -huh. <laughs> of nursing interventions. Uh, let me emphasize that this bundle does not include medical intervention at all. Mm -hmm. We only choose nursing interventions uh -huh. that we can provide as nurses. Uh -huh. yes. Ma'am, di ba talagang ang mga nurse, sabi nga nila dapat uh -huh. mahaba ang inyong pasensya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talaga dito ba napapractice yung bawat pasyente, iba-iba din ang inyong approach? Yeah. Kasi, like for example, in the bundle, you just imagine, if you have to take care of the patient, you will only give one specific intervention, right? But in the bundle of care, you have to give all, all together in the series. Let's say, for example, you give the first one, the second, and the third. So it's a series. It's not a one-shot deal. Mm -hmm. And it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. Until such time or until such that you can attain what, mm -hmm. what you want to, to get, and that is the patient's outcome. Mm -hmm. Paano yung magiging approach doon sa bawat age siguro? Siyempre, iba yung uh, pangangalaga natin sa bata and din sa mga matatandang pasyente. Yeah, we have different bundles. Actually, right now, uh, sa research, there are a lot of bundles. But mostly, wala pa ako nakikita sa bata. Okay. Uh -huh. Sa matanda talaga. Mm -hmm. And then mostly sa mga those who are really requiring patient care like... Uh, patients in ICU or bedridden patients. Mm -hmm. May kaibahan pa ba ito, ma'am, compared dun sa mga, syempre, habang nag-aaral yung isang nursing student and then you have all the trainings, compared dito sa yun, yun yung mga ino-offer? Uh, what do you mean by that? Parang, syempre, di ba, sabi niyo, meron kayong iba't ibang bundles, pero yung ibang mga natutunan natin oh. sa habang nag-aaral tayo, may kaibahan pa ba, ma'am? Actually, they said that these are already proven. These are all nursing interventions that nurses or nursing students provide but what is the difference is 
as I have said, they put it in a group of series of intervention. It's just like when you take care of the patient, you, do, you just don't give it in one shot or one intervention, mm -hmm. but you have to give all of the bundle. Mm -hmm. So it's something like a package. Yes. Let's say, for example, oh, you, 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 you were uh, admitted in the ICU. Automatic, they will give you this bundle yes. to prevent pneumonia, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, what, I what is the beauty of the bundle is that you cannot forget any any nursing interventions mm -hmm. that you have to give specifically to prevent pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So that means pneumonia can be prevented or pneumonia can be delayed. So ano ang mga medical institutions na yung nag-adopt nito or nagpapatupad nito? Uh, I know Asian, the Asian hospital okay. is one. I presented one. Yung the future is free from BAP. Also, I've heard about St. Luke's. Of course, they are the leading one, so they are um, adopting this bundle. The pressure also bundle. I've had, uh, I've heard a lot of hospitals also adopting to the bundle, but uh, not specifically on a specific bundle, but on the checklist. Mm -hmm. Checklist lang muna sila. But the checklist is to also geared towards prevention of the pressure ulcer bundle. Mm -hmm. So maybe later on when we introduce the bundle, most probably. Pangayin, mamay, naisip ba tayo ang panibagong uh, bundle pa siguro? <laughs> Sabi nga, addict nga daw ako sa bundle of care. Yes. Kasi maganda siya, actually. And uh, it, it, it's, it's my one way of uh, parang contribution to, to the society, to the, to the nursing education, the nursing field. Mm -hmm. Talagang ang hirap ng trabaho ng isang nurse, hindi ba, mamay? <laughs> And yun eh, yung uh, translational, sabi nga, mm -hmm. you have to translate the research. Mm -hmm. Kaya lang nga, we have a difficulty in in funding, in ano, kaya kasi it's, th that's why DOST I'm calling yes, <laughs> for, yes. for the funding, di ba? Kasi most of the time, you uh, let's face it, you focus on technology, right? And this actually helps, it also imp uh, improve patient outcomes, yeah. but... When we are talking about people or sick people responding to illnesses, we are also, kasi sabi nga kanina, uh, doctors are away from, from the patients and the one in charge for the patients 24-7 is the nurse, are the nurses. Mm -hmm. So that's why very important talaga yung mabigyan sila ng specific interventions. Mm -hmm. and then parang package nga, di ba? Mas maganda. Mm -hmm. So it's just like buying a food from McDo, diba? instead of buying only hamburger or buying only the, the french fries, mm -hmm. but also you have to buy all because this package brings you the best one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any final words, ma'am? <laughs> For the final words, siguro, uh, I just, just want to emphasize that uh, we in the nursing education are doing our part to contribute to the betterment of the society by by conducting researches, especially in the higher education. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat po at ang nakasama naman natin ngayon, of course, Dr. Josephine De Leon. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating mga kababayan. Ngayong araw ho ng Webes ay wala naman tayong binabantayang bagyo sa loob po ng ating era of responsibility. So balit dito po sa boundary ng ating uh, PAR ay meron pong uh, low pressure area at maaari po itong pumasok sa ating era of responsibility within this day. Sa ngayon ay wala naman po tayong nakikitang direktang epekto pa nito nitong low pressure area sa anumang bahagi ng ating LADMAS. So balit yung ITCJ o Intertropical Convergence Zone ay patuloy na nakakaapekto ho particularly sa southern Mindanao. Pero po, para sa ating pagtaya ng ating panahon, asahan po natin na doon po sa uh, 
malaking bahagi ng Mindanao maging dito, ng, dito sa Kabisayaan ay maaaring makaranas ng maulap na kalangitan na may light water trains. Dito po sa Luzon, Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon ay makakaasa po ng bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan lamang na may pulo-pulong mga pagulan o pagkidlat, pagkulog o yung mga isolated thunderstorms especially po during afternoon or evening. Para naman sa ating pagtaya ng temperature dito sa Metro Manila ay pwede pa rin umabot hanggang sa 33 degrees Celsius ang ating uh, maximum temperature habang 34 degrees Celsius naman sa Tugig Rao City at malamig pa rin po sa Baguio na maaaring umabot hanggang sa 25 degrees Celsius na maximum temperature. Samantala sa Kabisayaan, katulad na nga po ng nabanggit ko kanina, maaari pong makaapekto itong ITCC dito po sa Western and Central Visayas na magdudulot ng maulap na kalangitan na may light to moderate trains. But for Eastern Visayas, sinaasahan po natin na, sa hapo, na ngayong umaga hanggang tanghali ay, ay bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap lamang na kalangitan ang kanilang mararanasan. Pagdating po mamaya ng hapon at gabi ay maaari na po sila magkaroon ng maulap na kalangitan na may light to moderate trains due to ITCC. Sa, sa Mindanao naman, uh, katulad na nga po ng nabangit ko, dito po sa Caraga Region, Davao Region at Soxergen Region ay maaari din po sila makaranas ng maulap na kalangitan na may light ng mother trains. Kaya payo po natin sa ating mga kababayan doon, huwag pong kalimutang magdala ho ng payong ano man po ang la, ang, saan man po ang lakad nila sa araw na ito dahil sigurado po at malaki ang tsansa ng mga pag-ulan sa mga nabangit ng lugar. But for the rest of Mindanao, inaasa naman po natin ang bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap lamang na kalangitan at pulo-pulong mga pag-ulan lamang o isolated rain showers or, or thunderstorms ang maaari pong maranasan. Para sa pagtayan ng temperature sa Cagayan Oro ay maaari, po, maaari pong umabot hanggang sa 32 degrees Celsius ang ating maximum temperature doon habang 34 degrees Celsius sa Sambuaga City at 32, 32 degrees Celsius din po sa Davao City. Wala tayong gale warning na nakataas sa anumang bahagi ng ating mga waybayang dagat sa araw na ito, kaya't pinapayagan pa rin ang Philippine Coast Guard na pumalaot ang ating mga kababayang mangisda maging nyo magumagamit lamang ho ng maliliit na sasakyang pandagat. Dahil inaasahan po natin na sa malaking bahagi ng ating uh, Baybaying dagat actually sa buong kapuluan po ay banayad hanggang sa katamtaman lamang ang magiging pag-alon. Samantala para naman sa ating weather outlook sa ilang key cities dito sa Pilipinas, let's start with Metro Manila. Bukas po maaari tayo makaranas ng maulap na kalantan na may light to moderate rains and thunderstorms. Pero pagdating po ng weekend ay nasaan po natin generally fair weather apart from isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. 23 to 32 degrees Celsius po ang maaaring maging agwat ng temperatura dito sa uh, Metro Manila habang 24 to 33 degrees Celsius naman po sa araw huya ng Sabado and 25 to 33 degrees Celsius sa linggo. Dumako naman tayo sa Baguio City. Bukas po at katulad ng weather dito sa Metro Manila, maaaring makaranas ng maulap na kalangitan na may light to mod trains doon sa Baguio City. Habang sa weekend po ay maaaring na pong mag-improve ang weather having a partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. 16 to 23 degrees Celsius po ang maaaring maging agwat ng temperatura doon sa Baguio. Habang 16 to 24 sa, naman sa araw ng Sabado and 17 to 24 po sa araw huya ng linggo. Sa Kabisayaan po, particularly dito po sa Metro Cebu, bukas po hanggang sa weekend ay inaasahan natin mag-improve mag ang weather natin doon having a partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. Pero po patuloy nating uh, pinaalala sa ating mga kababayan, posibleng-posibleng pa rin po ang pagbuhos ng ulan doon, uh, katu uh, epekto na nga nitong ITCC o Intertropical Conversion Zone. 24 to 33 degrees Celsius po ang maaari maging agwat o temperature range dito sa Metro Cebu mula bukas hanggang sa weekend. And lastly, on Metro Davao, 23 to 31 degrees Celsius ang maaaring maging agwat ng temperatura bukas sa Metro Davao at uh, inaasahan pa rin natin ang maulap na kalangitan, kalingatan doon na may light to moderate trains. Dala nga, dala na nga po nitong ITCC habang 24 to 32 degrees Celsius naman by Saturday day, inaasahan natin uh, unti-unti mag-improve ang weather doon habang 30 23 to 31 degrees Celsius po on Sunday, having a cloudy skies with light to mud rains and thunderstorms. Ang sunrise po natin kanina is 5.45 in the morning at inaasahan natin dudubog ang araw mamaya sa ganap na alas 5.48 huya ng gabi. Ito po si Lori Din Dela Cruz. Magandang umaga. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSMBFI Building. 
318 St. Dolan Road, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.citev.net. And that's it for today. Abangan ang continuation ng aming special coverage sa ASA NAST International Symposium. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang updates sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya naman sabay-sabay tayo makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOST TV, the program that delivers science for the people.